We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. Uh, still just me. How you doing today, chat? I'll say hi to the chat. We got we got some people in chat. They're all being very talkative. Um, they know because I'm rolling solo that that means I'm paying extra attention to the chat. So um, the weather is nice. See, that, that one's for you, Suncard. I mean, it's also for Duncan because he said it. Uh, but that's for you, Suncard. A little bit of weather talk off the top just to say that the weather is nice. Um, I'm not sure what to do with that picture at the moment. We're still not talking about Michigan. This is still an Ohio State centric podcast. Michigan is still at the center of the Big Ten world this week, maybe even the college football world this week. Uh, and, and there's multiple reasons for that. One, it's a huge deal. Two, the slate of games this weekend aren't great. If we're being honest, Bells are founders. Bells, because uh, Bells is still uh, owned by a, I mean, well, that, that's a trick question. Both of these are Michigan breweries. Um, both of them are excellent, if I have to admit that. If I have to admit, they're both excellent. But uh, Founders um, has since been bought out by a large brewery that's not even centered in America, I don't think. Um, and as far as I know, Bell's is still independent. Although independent means Michigan-owned. So that kind of goes in... It's a good question. 3.30 is the better window this week. Uh, I, I will say that. Three of the games we're picking for the Sloop Picks this week um, are, in fact, um, are, are in fact uh, 3.30 window games. And I think I probably left a fourth 3.30 game on the table that I probably could have picked, except I didn't want to do four from one time slot in the Sloop Picks. So... Two ranked on ranked plus Florida, Georgia. Yep. All right. Let's get started. Oklahoma at Kansas. Um, Oklahoma is a nine and a half point favorite. Kyle uh, sent us his picks. He is picking Oklahoma. Um, I, so, you know me, I like to look at the, uh, against the score or excuse me, against the spread records of teams. Uh, Oklahoma had their first loss against the spread this week. Uh, in their defense, it was only by two points. They only missed the spread by two points last week. Um, the Jayhawks, on the other hand, have only covered three times the entire season. Um, and they've never covered when they were the underdog. They, they've only ever covered when favored. So um, I'm not going to hold Oklahoma's first against the spread loss against them. It was only two points. I'm going to stick with the hot hand here and, and go with the Sooners. Uh, guest picker once again this week is Buckeye Esquire. He's down there in the chat. He says, don't think Jalen Daniels is playing. Uh, yeah, he says, is Jalen Daniels playing? Seems like a no. Uh, but the Jayhawks are coming off a bye. So maybe there's a little extra juice in there. Oklahoma coming off a spiritual bye following a pretty flat showing against UCF is maybe a little fraudulent, but I think they have enough to get it done. And at least by 10, taking the Sooners here, pick Oklahoma. That's one game down. Uh, that is a uh, Oklahoma pick across the board. Next up, we have Clemson going to Raleigh uh, to visit the NC State Wolfpack. Clemson is favored by 10 and a half. Uh, Kyle picks Clemson. Um, me, once again, looking at the against the spread numbers, uh, Clemson has only covered twice this year. They've only covered twice. Uh, so that's a pretty bad indication for Clemson. Uh, but then I looked at NC state and NC state has also only covered twice this year. <laughs> these are two Vegas, uh, losers. Like these, these are, these are some terrible Vegas teams. Um, when in doubt, pick the quarterback. 
uh, which is not super helpful in for, for this game. So that okay. Uh Clemson. Okay. All right. Here, here we go. Here we go. Uh Clemson has won by more than 10 points against a power five team this year. Only once, and that was against Syracuse. They had five opportunities to beat a power five team by more than 10 by 10 points or more this year. Uh, they only did it once. Give me the wolf pack. Um, okay. Yeah, Square says Dabo has been problematic quote factory lately. He, he's always, he's always been a call. Yeah, uh, he's gotten worse in years, but whew. uh, when he's not making suicide jokes or telling fans to quit liking the team, he's putting his red shirt freshman quarterback on blast publicly or uh, for a failed goal line play in double overtime that cost Clemson the game. At first glance, giving any team 10 plus points against the Tigers seems completely ridiculous, but the 2022 magic for the Wolf Pack is completely gone, which makes me think this is a sneaky good line. They're giving me a hook and like a dumb fish that I am, I'm going to take it. Pick NC State. So, uh, that is me and Esquire going with NC State and Kyle going with Clemson. Listen, and the only reason Kyle didn't pick NC State is because he knows I would have made fun of him if he had and that he wouldn't be here to defend himself. Let's be honest, that's why he did it. He is a homer after all, exactly. Um, Georgia. It says Georgia at Florida, but that's not true. That's that's what CBS says, but it's not true. It's a, it's a neutral game. Um, this is being played in Jacksonville, as this game always is. Um, Gators are going to win outright. I'm putting it out there. Final score will be like 23 to 20, and you'll be there. Austin's going to be in in jacksonville for this game um oh we we have a florida grad and a georgia grad in the chat right now just gonna point that out uh kyle is picking florida uh we're talking i was talking about clemson being really bad against the spread this year georgia has only covered once it's only covered once this year and that was against kentucky on one hand like you could make the argument that Kentucky is the best team that Georgia's played this year. So maybe that's the only game they kind of, you know, they're coming off of two national titles. Maybe they just feel like they've actually needed to turn it on against Kentucky. Cause that was the only team they played this year that was ranked maybe because Florida's Florida, even if Florida is not very good, maybe, you know, it's still the Florida uniforms. It's still a rivalry. Maybe they actually show up against Florida and maybe that's the magic sauce for Georgia actually getting a cover. On the other hand, uh, Georgia doesn't have Bowers. Georgia doesn't have Bowers. And no matter how bad Florida is, when you're down 14 and a half points, you're still going to need to score some in order to cover. Give me the Gators. Um. Let's see. Buckeye Esquire says, I said, I already said Kyle picked Florida, right? Uh, Kyle picked Florida if I didn't. Uh, Buckeye Esquire says the world's largest outdoor cocktail party is an apps is absolutely a spectacle, uh, was absolutely a spectacle. Uh, it's billed as I have attended this game and the traditional weekend spent on St. Simon's Island that accompanies it. Georgia fans stay in St. Simons because it's the southernmost barrier island that is still in Georgia because like Woody Hayes, they don't want to spend. I feel like I misread something in there, but I'm going to keep going. They don't want to spend. They don't want to give the state of Florida or the hotels a dime of their money. 14 and a half is a fat line, especially without Bowers, but 
as the song goes, ain't nothing finer in the land than drunk, obnoxious Georgia fan going with the school, uh, going with the school kind enough to give me a law degree. Go dogs. So that is a Florida pick for Kyle and I and a Georgia pick for our Georgia law school graduate. Oregon at Utah. Kyle picks Oregon. Uh, Oregon, uh, the first I think the first time we picked an Oregon game in the sloop picks this year I said that Oregon was five and zero against the spread. Uh, they have lost their last two against the spread. So they're five and two against the spread, which is great, but they're on a two game slide. Utah, on the other hand, has beaten the spread three in uh, three times in their last four attempts. It, it kind of seems like Oregon responded really poorly to their loss and that Utah has rallied behind their loss. Odin's going to be at this game. We got we got people attending all sorts of games this week in the chat. Uh, Utah, it seems right now to have all the positive momentum. I think I'm going to ride that momentum, especially if I'm giving uh, getting nearly a full touchdown in order to do that. Give me Utah. Um, let's see next up. Wait a minute. Nope. I almost forgot to read Esquire. Uh, guest Esquire says Utah is easily my favorite team West of the Mississippi. The fact that they have a safety playing and dominating on offense as a running back is awesome. And watching them smack USC and Caleb Williams around last week with a pig farmer named Bryson at quarterback brought me profound joy. But Oregon isn't the soft, uh, decadent program that USC is, and six and a half points aren't quite enough. I think Oregon can win by a touchdown pick Oregon. All right, I'm the lone wolf on this one. I got Utah, uh, both Esquire and Kyle picking Oregon. Next up, we have Duke going to Louisville. Duke going to Louisville. Kyle is picking Duke. All right. That kind of blows my NC state thing out of the water where I was afraid that Kyle was not picking NC state just, just to, but then he turns around and picks Duke. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but, uh, Kyle picking Duke in this game. Uh, Duke only cut. I've noticed this looking at the, looking at the, uh, against the spread results. When Duke, uh, Duke only covers when they win. Duke either wins and covers or they lose and they don't. When they win the game, they're four and zero against the spread. When they lose the game, they're zero and two against the spread. This is only against FBS teams because it fits my narrative that way. However, uh, they not going to have Riley Leonard in this game. It's supposed to be up in the air. It's supposed to be unknown. Um, I'd personally be surprised if he plays this game. And if he does play this game, um, I, I got to imagine he's not going to be. He's not going to be great, right? Um, it is a hot, pretty bad high ankle sprain in that game uh, last week. So. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to assume that Leonard's not going to play and I'm going to I'm going to pick the Cardinals. Buckeye Esquire says Duke football has been scrappy this year, especially with Riley Leonard. He went down against uh, he went down again last week against Florida State, uh, but was jogging back and forth on the sideline trying to get in. I think he's officially listed as questionable, but the trainers may need bear mace to keep him off the field. Uh, if Leonard plays, I like Duke outright, but if you're giving me the points, I'm going to take them pick Duke. Once again, I'm the outlier. All right. Last game. Last game. 
Um, we have Washington going to Stanford. Kyle is picking Washington. Me, uh, I note that Washington was favored by more than 20 points this year twice. It should be noted. I have been terrible at sloop picks this year. Uh, so have I. So don't worry about it. The fact that I'm out, the fact that I'm going against you guys is probably a good sign for you in all honesty. Um, where was it? Oh yeah. Washington twice this year before this game favored by more than 20 points. Uh, that was against Tulsa and Arizona state. And in both of those games, they failed to cover. Stanford has been dogged by more than 20 points twice this year before this game. Those games were against USC and Oregon and they failed to cover in both of those games. So yeah, that's not much help. All right. I, I, I kind of wanted to go uh, with the quarterback, but you know, the quarterback's kind of tied in cause it's already a huge spread. Uh, so you know what I did? I went and I looked and I wanted to know, Hey, where did, where's all the Vegas, where's all the money going? Where, where's, where's all the money flowing? And I found out that most of the money is flowing towards Washington. So I said, screw it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go up river. Uh, give me the Cardinal. Ah, uh, Buckeye Esquire's pick. Washington fell into the Pac-12 version of the Bermuda Triangle last week. They were forced to play a football game in the state of Arizona where all good teams go to have their crappiest games of the season. Yeah, but those games are against Arizona, not Arizona State, right? Or is there another game I'm, I'm not familiar with? Um, it's like playing in the Big Ten West at night. It's just going to be a bad time. USC had a bad time versus uh, Arizona State at first. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Uh, after a serious performance issues in the desert, Penix returns uh, to the moist climate of the Pacific Northwest, where I expect him to explode for approximately 1 billion yards. No comment. Picking Washington to cover the Redwood size spread. Go Huskies. Uh, that is two picks for Washington. And I, once again, am the outlier going with the Cardinal. All right. Uh, those are six of the seven games we predicted this week. If you want to hear our thoughts on Ohio State uh, going to Wisconsin, then you might want to uh, check out our Thursday episode called Know Your Enemy. And um, what do you what, what are your thoughts, chat? Um, I think I think we're. Is this this show went a lot. We're, we're not we're not very long on time at the moment because uh, Kyle wasn't here to also talk. So um, what games are you looking forward to chat? You got any ask Sloopcast questions you want to roll out live on the show? Um, you got anything? We got a little bit of time to kill here. Spikes is typing. You got to You got to give spikes credit for typing. I stopped. He stopped typing. All right. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll just call this a short one then. I guess we'll just call this a short one. That's okay. Um, picking six games without Kyle here goes by a little bit quicker than normal, I suppose. Um, go Bearcats. Go Bearcats. Why not? So, uh, I guess, uh, tonight's ending music is Courtney from work, just like it was on Thursday. Um, if you're thinking, Jared, this is a very short episode of the Sloopcast. I agree. Uh, if you want more, go listen to know your enemy. Um, if you already listened to know your enemy, uh, there's a bunch of great podcasts on the Buckeye huddle network. So 
uh, check out the Buckeye Huddle Network. Uh, we'll be watching a game this weekend in the Discord server. I'm not 100% sure where the voting is. The voting seemed pretty tight between the uh, mid-afternoon window and the evening window. I'm not sure where that's going to end up when it's all said and done. But um, regardless, we will be watching a set of games together in the Discord server this weekend. So come hang out. Come hang out. We'll watch the game together. It'll be fun. And by the game, I mean a game because I don't know which I I, I was playing. I was playing this goofy game before when Ohio State was going to be on Peacock. Where, Gee, guys, I don't know which game we'll be watching. Wink, wink, nod, nod. But actually, I, I, the voting is very tight and I don't know which games we'll be watching. So just just to own that and be completely honest. Um, so, yeah, with all that being said, uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by Courtney from work. Courtney from work's a Columbus based band. Um, and they're a lot of fun and you should go see them live, especially they're a very fun live band and they're typically playing shows around Columbus and they're typically not expensive and you should go. So, um, there is a non-zero chance Connor Stallions will be joining the discord. We don't have the camera that shows the sidelines though. We, we're, we're, we're stuck to TV angles. So I don't think we will be super helpful, unfortunately, or fortunately for him. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from work.